Hey everyone, today we are going to be testing out 13 different games running on the brand new M5 MacBook Pro. And this is going to be the base version of the M5 chip with 16 gigabytes of RAM, 10 GPU cores and 10 CPU cores. And at the time of recording, we don't have access to the M5 Pro or the M5 Max. However, this M5 chip is proving to be surprisingly powerful and it's capable of playing many different AAA titles and indie hits too. And it's a very promising sign of what we might be able to achieve with the M5 Pro and M5 Max once they release in the future. So today we're going to be testing out a multitude of different games, including of native macOS titles that are optimized for Apple Silicon, as well as Windows games running through translation. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at the first game. First up, we are looking at the wonderful Hades 2, which recently got its 1.0 release on multiple platforms, including Mac. If you didn't know about it, it's an action roguelite and sequel to one of the most beloved indie titles of all time. Now this game looks wonderful running on the MacBook Pro's ProMotion 120Hz screen and this is the perfect kind of indie game to be able to play on the base M5 chip, easily able to maintain 120fps at 1080p. Now presentation of this game is absolutely beautiful, but we can find other games which push the M5 chip even harder. For example, Resident Evil 4 Remake does have its own native Mac release and better shows off what the base M5 chip is capable of. Here running the game at 1080p using the Metal FX quality preset. And interestingly, you can see from the Metal HUD, it's not actually quality mode, but it's actually upscaling from 540p, which is basically ultra performance mode. And we're able to hit over 60 to 80 FPS in this beginning level. And what's great is that if you buy this on the Apple ecosystem through the App Store, you also get the iPhone and iPad version included. Next up, we're looking at Control, which is Remedy's third person, very atmospheric action game. This recently got a Mac App Store release where this game runs natively now. Here we're playing this at 1080p on a medium graphics preset. And we have Metal FX upscaling turned on. So it's actually rendering at 839p or around 80% of the native 1080p resolution. And thanks to this upscaling, we're hitting over 60 to 80 FPS, even in intense action scenes. So this game runs great running on the M5, and it's a shame that other Remedy games like Alan Wake 2 haven't come to the same platform because it would also work great. And the next game we're looking at is Dead Island 2, which received a native Mac port earlier this year. Here the M5 chip is handling the game really well, running the game at 1080p medium graphics preset with Metal FX set to quality mode. And we're managing to maintain a respectable 60 to 80 FPS even in combat scenarios. So if you haven't played this before, this is a first person action role playing game set in Los Angeles in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. You can get this game on Steam as well, where the Mac version is bundled with the Windows version too. So next up we're looking at Escape from Zuckov, which has also landed on macOS. Here we're running it on the M5 at 1080p and we can expect about 60 to 70 FPS with FSR 1.0 set to balanced mode. Now this is a pretty bare bones Mac port and gameplay wise it's a tongue in cheek parody of Escape from Tarkov with a similar gritty extraction shooter formula but with a chaotic cartoonish single player twist. And right now the game is trending in the Steam charts with over 300k concurrent players. And even though this is a fairly simple game, it's great to see it running on Mac. Next we're looking at Assassin's Creed Shadows, which also got a native Mac port earlier this year, and it wasn't that well optimized for Apple Silicon Macs at launch. And a few patches have actually added some performance improvements on the platform, however to get this running at any decent speed, I've had to turn down the settings quite drastically to make this run on the M5. So this is 1080p at the low graphics preset, with Metal FX set to quality mode, and mostly the game works at around 30 to 35 FPS, sometimes dropping below 30 even at these graphic settings. Next up, we're looking at the runaway indie hit Ball X Pit. This is a brick breaking, ball fusing, bullet hell, base building survival roguelite. It's not a particularly demanding game, but it's able to run at 120 frames per second on this Mac. So you can't really tell from the gameplay that I'm showing you here, but this is a seriously addictive game. Somehow with all of the balls jumping around and bouncing off all the enemies, it's like a dopamine hit factory. There are tons of different combinations of power-up balls and dozens of different characters to unlock all different skill sets and playstyles. Next up, we are looking at Windows Gaming through Crossover. So this is Starfield, the latest Bethesda RPG set in space, running through Crossover previews. So if you want to find out how to do this yourself, make sure to click on the link in the description for my latest tutorial. Here we're running at 1080p medium graphics settings with resolution set to 66%. And we're getting a decent frame rate, something about 35, 40 FPS even in combat. Just remember, that this game is running through multiple translation layers, so it's going to be slower than on an equivalent Windows computer, but impressive given the challenges of running a non-native Windows game on Mac. Next up is the Windows version of GTA 5 Legacy, so we can't run the enhanced edition through crossover on Mac at the moment. 
However, the single player legacy version does actually run pretty well through crossover. Just be aware that the first time you play this game on a Mac, you're going to experience significant shader compilation stutter. But other than that, we actually have pretty good performance. Here I'm running at 1080p at default graphics settings on my M5 Mac, and we're able to hit about 90 to 100 FPS. Just be aware that you can't play the online version of GTA 5 Legacy on Mac via crossover, but it is actually possible to do this via the Canary build of Windows 11 ARM through Parallels. If you want to find out how to do this, then check out the link in the description. Next, we're taking a look at the recently released Borderlands 4. So unlike the previous iterations, Borderlands 3 and Borderlands 2, etc., Borderlands 4 has no Mac version, I'm afraid. And therefore, again, we're playing the Windows version of the game through crossover. And thankfully, it's actually pretty much fully functional. I was able to join online matches and play at a pretty decent frame rate. This is running at 1080p low graphics preset with Metal Effects set to quality mode and we're getting about 35 to 45 FPS. It's a shame that we don't have that Mac port follow up, but it might be for the best as the Borderlands 3 Mac port was pretty bad at the time. Next, we're looking at Clear Obscure Expedition 33. So this is the Windows version and this is one of my favorite gaming experiences of 2025. I actually played a huge portion of this on my MacBook and it's surprisingly playable. Here we're making use of the DLSS Metal FX hook available as part of crossover preview at the time of recording. And we're running this at 1080p high graphics preset with that Metal FX set to quality mode. The game does look beautiful on the Mac screen and this was my preferred way to play it away from home. I did have the option of playing this on the Steam Deck but my MacBook Pro with M3 Max actually ran this way better and even this base M5 chip has enough performance to make this game look really good. Next up, we're looking at Indie Hit Megabonk. So this is similar to a 3D version of, say, Vampire Survivors. It's basically a roguelike survival game where you have to fight through hordes of enemies through randomly generated maps and try to figure out the best synergies between upgrades, weapons, etc. It has a pretty simplistic visual design, but it also features thousands of enemies on screen all at once. Now, given that this is a game built in the Unity engine, it would have been pretty easy to make a Mac port of this game, but unfortunately, we have to play this Windows version through crossover, but it still manages to run pretty well, no issues, 120 frames per second. And lastly, we're going to take a look at the Windows version of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, this game has only recently become playable on a Mac, all thanks to the latest versions of Crossover Preview. Previously, we had a bunch of graphical artifacts, but those have all been fixed. And performance, although not as good as the Windows version of the first part of this trilogy, the remake Integrate, it's still very much a playable game. So in the early sections that I tested out running at 1080p low graphics preset with the Metal FX set to performance mode, this game still manages to look good even though it's quite aggressively upscaled. We're getting about 60 to 80 plus FPS depending on the area that you're in. And for me, this is pretty good, acceptable performance. And as somebody who played the first part of the trilogy on Mac, I can't wait to dive into this huge RPG title once I'm ready. So anyway, that was my look at gaming on the M5 MacBook Pro. I'm really looking forward to testing out the M5 Pro chip and M5 Max chip once they get released, hopefully early next year. Anyway, if you want to see other game testing done on this exact same MacBook Pro, I have another video where I cover 10 other games running on this system, including native Mac games, Windows games and also emulation too. Anyway, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.